Today we're doing a Subaru 5 EAT. Let's get into it. All right, first we're going to get rid of these couple 10 millimeter bolts. Output shaft speed sensor. Next, we're going to take the tail housing off. These are 12 millimeter bolts and they don't all need to come out. Just the ones that are going through this housing. Some of them bolt this housing to this piece. This little bracket's an assembly line thing. They use it to hoist the transmission up then they smack it down with a hammer. So this is typically something you don't need to put back on if you don't want to. Down here, there's always another bracket, so take note of its position so you can put it back on correctly. Get down here so we can see. Should be all of them. Okay. These are your transfer clutches for all wheel drive. This is a pin for your parking assembly. The hub that the clutch is right on for your all wheel drive. There's a little washer here, the bearing here. I want to make sure that feels good. This feels good. We have a exciter ring for your speed sensor. And with these, there's a bunch of shims in this back section. So you want to keep these all where they came from. Next, we're going to pull the planetary out. This is your all-wheel drive planetary. You check all these gears. Most importantly, you want to look down in here and see if there's the chipped gear teeth on this sun gear that's attached to this shaft. Okay, this looks fairly decent. So these shims belong here. Okay, again, I'm gonna make sure these bearings don't have a crunch to them. These shims go on the top side here. Also, we have another shim that's in here, okay? that goes there. Sometimes you have one shim, sometimes you have two shims. Just got to keep track of everything. This is your parking pole and a return spring. Parking rod. And we also have an outdoor shaft speed sensor back here. These don't really go bad. The only time I see them go bad is if your um, center differential wipes out and the gear tooth gets caught in there and then actually tags the sensor but take a look in here because um you know there's a specific way to get it back in okay you see that this goes under here there's a little tab that holds it and it goes back in Next, we have these 14s. Someone took the liberty of taking a couple of them out already because you have cooler lines and stuff like that that are um, held on by them. Okay. 
can. We don't try and take it off. He actually, we have some more stuff on the bottom that we have to do after we take the pan off and the valve body. Pan bolts. This looks like it's going to be a little ugly. Under the pan, we have several connectors. I'm going to depress these. Now take note of where all this stuff goes for when you put it back together. Okay, so these are the bolts that have to come out to get your valve body out. at that. I wonder what we're going to find in here. All right, now we have access to these last three bolts that hold the differential section onto the um, main transmission body. And this is, um, if you want, that's the number. It's a Kent Moore tool. Sometimes these are glued on there. Pretty good, as you can see. Okay. <clears throat> so, this is our front differential. Just want to make sure this feels nice and smooth. So you take these apart. You have adjusters here, like on a nine inch Ford rear. So these screw in and out. And that's how you're gonna set your carrier side to side. So my suggestion is if you're taking this out, you mark it, count the turns on one screw, mark it, count the turns, and then take it out. You're gonna have to take one of these all the way out, back one, most of the way out, and then you'll be able to get this differential out. Next, I want to get rid of this wiring harness. Keep smacking around on the bench. So in here, there's a little tab that you have to push. And work it out. So there's also a 10 millimeter bolt that holds this in. I don't really know why they need the tab. I don't see why you need both, but maybe it's a assembly line thing that I don't know anything about. But what we got next we have our pinion here and these kind of can get tight so this big torques so I like to get a punch There's a 
bunch of 14 millimeter bolts under here. And it's interesting, just from the gear oil sitting in here over the years, you get like a burnt hair smell coming out of these bolts. It's kind of nasty. this one in for now and that's another one of these inverted torques or, or whatever it is all right this last bolt with the Torx head it's a uh, t50 and if you look it's a countersink you have a countersink here so when you put this back together you want to kind of snug this bolt down first because it holds all that where it's supposed to be get to the rest of that in a second but uh let's get the pump out of the way There's a lot of pump bolts in a Subaru IVAT Another thing you want to take note of is every one of these bolts has a little rubber washer on it and rubber seal. Okay, so that seals it from your gear oil wicking through those pump bolts and, and um, getting into the transmission section. So a lot of this transmission is um, we have seals that are separating the gear oil from the front diff from the transmission fluid in the back. The pinion shaft, I like to hit through from the back. And this is why I left the one bolt in, otherwise you might have this whole thing come. Let's get this out of the way. So I take note of where this goes. It's like a little hole back here that you have to put this back through when you put it back together. Again, there's usually one or more shims here that are to set your pinion depth. So you have the depth you set with these shims, your side to side you set with these adjusters. If you're not changing any parts though, you could reuse your shim typically and put the adjusters back to where they came from. Okay, and sometimes the gears stick to the transmission case side. So they ride on here, so you want to look at this surface. There's a bushing in here. There's another bushing here. An O-ring, right? When you put it back together, that goes into this groove. Additionally, you're going to have two more O-rings here. And your lockup O-ring. And this is important to always change this thing, for sure. The torque and get it, converter gets very hot, and the seal gets flattened out, and give you converter slips and things like that. Also, there's a double seal back here. Right, One side seals oil from going from the differential into the transmission, and the other side seals oil from coming from the transmission into the differential. Okay. This bolt also has a rubber sealing washer. I'll get that later. And what's typical with Subaru 4 EATs and 5 EATs, this stuff is kind of hard to um, take apart sometimes. You know, there's dowel pins that get rusty and various other reasons, but they're, um, they're kind of a bear. Now, this is something else that's important. We have a little rubber seal here. And this sometimes stays in this side, or sometimes 
it stays in the other side. All right, and what that is, believe it or not, is the drain back for your front seal. So in between your front seal and this bushing, you can see in the casting, this is where it comes and you now goes through there and then it drops into your pan. And this is all because, you know, we don't want these fluids mixing. Gear oil here, ATF here. See, I'm holding this thing in with my fingers. All together. Okay. And this piece, I guess, we're going to call the pump. This half of the pump, then you have the body and gears. So you have a Torrington bearing here. You have a set of clutches here. This is one of the sets of clutches we rebuild, uh, we um, modify when we build these things. These are a little burnt, but we were able to go from, from two clutches to three clutches in here, which increases the torque capacity a lot. In here, we have another cage bearing. Now we can get to some of the fun stuff. It's one of the longer shafts in the industry. We'll look here. I don't know if you can see this. These clutches are starting to wear into here. We're gonna have to mess with that. I don't want them getting caught up on there when I try to move. Okay, so we have this whole sun gear. It's got a one-way clutch in here. I don't know if you can see that. So this is sprag. So this enables it to lock in one direction and turn in the other. And next, like we have in some other transmissions, we have this light snap ring that you got to kind of work out little by little. There's two little tabs to do it, but that usually doesn't uh, work. Okay. We got lucky. It's a bearing here. And if this goes bad, you can't change it. Because it's kind of, these gears hold it in place. Here we have a race for a bearing. Get this out of our way. And this is um, not surprising. These are an input clutch, and this is pretty much for your fifth gear. And this is always hammered. Back in the day when I started doing these, I would take apart transmissions with very, very low miles. And um, they'd be starting to burn, even though there was no symptom related to it. But these are, uh, these are metal to metal. This is like pretty severe damage. We have other planetary. And if you watch some of our other videos, you're going to see the similarities between this, um, some of the Nissan units. They're all manufactured by JATCO, which is the Japanese automatic transmission company. So they've been making transmissions for mostly Nissan and Subaru for, oh, geez, I guess since the 70s, no? Yes, yeah, easily. So they hold three speeds, like in Ford Granadas, and <laughs> they go way back. So this is kind of burnt from the uh, those that clutch pack that burnt them that I just showed you. Again, we have another bearing in here, and we have another sun gear, and this is also has a one-way clutch in it. Turn, lock. Now in here, there's a bearing and a race. And again, if you watch some of the other videos, like the seven-speed Nissans, the five-speed auto Nissans, 
are all very similar. However, your four-speed Subaru is, is completely different to Fourier AT, and we'll probably get into that pretty soon in a future video. Now this is your high-low reverse clutch. I guess this is going to be current too. Yeah, starting to go. Yeah, hot spots and the clutches are kind of blacked out. We want to look in here to make sure these oh, these don't look too great. These rings here kind of wear in. You always got to look in here. Sometimes they're kind of damaged. Now we have our direct drum, third gear and higher clutches. And of course, this is cooked too. See in here. Okay, I'm gonna try and do this in a way that you guys can see. Also, I'm gonna get splashed in the face with this fluid. So this is our low and reverse clutch pack. And, um, these are almost never damaged. And here we have more. Um, there's another snap ring that's that's holding in the spring retainer. So this is kind of under tension. You gotta work it out little by little. I'm trying to see where the end of it is. Spring, spring retainer, our slinky. Under here, we have a clutch piston. This is a little anti clunk spring that we put back in there. Trying my best to do this so you can see it, but. Kind of a hard shot. So that's the piston, and that's the bearing that sits on the, the support in here. So now we've got to take out this pretty humpy snap ring. I'm going to tip it up and get some of this oil out of the way, though, so I don't get splashed. <laughs> So as you can see, this opening to this is kind of at six o'clock as it sits in the transmission. Okay, here's our snap ring. It's a bevel. It's flat on this side. Goes back in with the flat facing back. All right. Now we have the support down in here. Take note that there's a bearing here. And we have three torque screws that hold this in. Right, one of you, we have to move the parking rod a little bit to get to. And you're going to need a long torx. There's no, there's no other way to do it, right? Because you got to get down this tube, and you know, socket's just going to be too fat to fit down in there. Uh, 
Now we got to slowly rock this thing back and forth because it's a, kind of an exact fit. If you get rough with it, it's going to get stuck and you're going to be unhappy. Here we have a bearing. And the same thing in here. It's not usually a concern, but you want to make sure you don't have any ring grooves in here. We also have a little metal washer. Okay. And that is going to sit right here. So we have a clutch hub and a sprag. Get a picture of this for you. So a sprag lets it turn in one direction, lock in the other. And you also have another washer under there. Got a bearing here. Um, something to take note of for the late 5AATs versus the earlies. On the early ones, you have two sets of clutches in here. Okay, you're not going to have this same setup in the back of, um, was it an 08 up? Right, and you're only going to have one set of clutches back here. So it's your first set. These are um, what you call your low clutches or your forward clutches. And then you have what amounts to being a coast clutch on the other side, or underneath it rather. And uh, typically both of these sets aren't really something that goes bad. So if you can see down in here, we're not gonna get it on camera, but we're gonna have to um, compress this down. That's a return spring, snap ring to take off. And then there's a couple sets of clutch pistons underneath here that we're gonna have to take out. Right, because there's rubber seals there that you're going to have to replace when you rebuild it. That's kind of the whole mess. We have a long way to go to get it back together. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.